Uh, but Ray over on YouTube, uh, I just fry, I just tried the Friedman technique technique. <clears throat> Let me try that again. I just tried the Friedman technique on high gain guitar and I love it. I used to do a 57 and 421 combo. What are you using when multi micing high gain guitars? So yeah, so the Fredman technique, uh, when you say that you did the Fredman technique, you're talking about the 257s, not that you use the 57 and 421 as your Fredman, right? I'm gonna assume that because as far as I know, uh, the Fredman is only using the 57s. So, um, yeah, the uh, like the Fredman technique is super cool. If y'all haven't heard of it, actually, give me one second. Took a run out to my li to my live room to grab a couple things to demonstrate what we're talking about here because. I personally love the Fredman technique. It's a lot of fun, especially if you've got like heavier, like death metal guitars, which are more rhythmic and, uh, and you don't necessarily need all of that, like mid range information. Let's see here. So what I have in my hand is a clip by a company called Wilkinson audio. Pretty sweet little, uh, I'm pretty, it looks like it was, uh, some kind of, uh, 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 what do you call it? Like the, the plastic printers, um, pretty durable too. It's got a, it's got a hard feel to it. And what you do is you take two SM 57s and you mount them into the clip like so. And you can do this without, without this clip too. Um, it's, it's not fully necessary to have it, but what you end up with is something like this, where you have uh, two 57s pointed at a 60 degree angle. I believe it's 60. It looks about, it's, it's not quite 45. Um, and uh, you've got them pointed at this angle and you put them, if I'm gonna use something here, uh, let's say that this is a speaker. You're gonna put them on like, so that one of them is at, is fully on axis with the speaker. And then the other one right here is off axis. And then you take these two microphones, you combine them into a small um, consumer quality mixer. Like literally with this technique, you are supposed to use a cheap mixer, like those little Mackies. I think uh, also Harbinger, that, 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 that whole idea that like, that you can plug like just two microphones into this one little mixer and, uh, and then you make the blend on the mixer and then you export that singular sound of both microphones combined from the mixer. So you're only, you got two mics, but you're only using one input and you send that sound into your, into your, uh, into your, uh, DAC and, uh, that's your guitar sound. Uh, there's a bit of commitment that goes into that. You have to like find the blend. One of the microphones is a bright mic. One of them is a dark mic, not by nature, but by their positioning. And then, uh, you take it and, uh, continue to like, you get this just God tone, like, especially if you like have like, like both guitars, like double tracked like that. And it's pretty cool. I've used it a bit. Um, but for the most part, whenever I'm doing, whenever I'm personally doing multi microphone, ooh, whenever I'm doing multi microphone setup, um, I usually like to use not an SM 57, but I've been really, really excited about the beta 57 ever since I got it. I love it on snare drum. I love it on vocals. Uh, although this SM seven B like generally beats out the beta 57 on vocals, but, uh, but I also really like it on a uh, guitar cab. Uh, it has a little bit less nastiness that you have to filter out from a, from an SM 57. And also it feels tighter, especially, you know, like you see people who like drape blankets and things like over their cabs and their rigs, and they end up uh, putting microphones on the cab and they're trying to like isolate the sound a bit and stuff and just make it tighter so that no room sound gets into that, no slap back. Uh, well, the Beta 57 by nature doesn't have a, doesn't have a cardioid, uh, 
pickup pattern and as a hypercardioid so it's more like it's more like it, it picks up I'll use this to demonstrate instead of picking up in this kind of way where it like picks up a little bit from the sides here in this shape and then rejects what's behind it uh, the beta 57 picks up much more straight along what's in front and to the side of it and then it has a tiny amount of pickup that runs right behind it which sounds like you know kind of a weird thing but you end up getting a much tighter sound closer sound a little bit more tension in that sound because it's more like focused um, and then all you have to do is baffle directly behind it and then you achieve that more god tier sound so i really like the beta 57 it sounds a little bit cleaner maybe a little bit more present um but then when I'm, what I'll pair with that is some kind of small diaphragm condenser. I've got a few here at the studio, uh, but I really like the sound. Like it's kind of like a woody woolly sound out of the Octava MK012s, which is a pretty famous pencil condenser. Um, uh, other ones that you can use. I also uh, tend to like swap them out interchangeably with uh, with my SE Electronics SE4s, which are a KM184 type voice uh small diaphragm condenser um so those maybe have a little bit brighter a little more you know open sound than uh than the than the uh octavas but that beta 57 with the octava just kind of gives this like claustrophobia like like uh like like just molten sound and it's pretty cool and usually i'm flying the beta 57 like all the way up and then i'm just kind of feeding in the condenser as needed uh-oh All right, so we hit our 30 minute mark on the, on the camera. For whatever reason, I'm sorry, I still can't figure that out. Um, may, I, maybe I need to try another Magic Lantern build, but uh, it's kind of, yeah, it's a thing. Sorry about that. But yeah, so I like using the Beta 57 just at full chooch and then just kind of feeding in the condenser mic uh, as needed to just kind of fill out the sound. Phase is super important with that whenever you're working with multiple microphones, especially in high gain because it, it, it can really sound uh, like a, a bit strange, uh, you know, in hollow if you're not paying attention to your phase. But yeah, uh, the 57 and 421 combo, classic combo. Andrew Sheps talks about how he's got like, like an SM57 and a 421 just like permanently taped at his studio, like taped together in perfect phase so that no matter like what cabinet he's on, he can just mount it up and just shove it like right in the center of a dust cap. And that's how Andrew Sheps gets a lot of his guitar tones, which is really cool. Uh, and, I, and I do like to do that sometimes too, if I know that we can go for that. But, um, but yeah, I think the most important thing when you're doing double miking with uh, guitar cabs is that you take any microphone, any combination of microphones that you have and put them in different positions on the speaker and you have to be willing to be creative and move them around try them in different positions try them at different levels but always making sure that every microphone on that cabinet is in as proper a phase as you can possibly do